Hello, it's me. I'm Hannah. I brought the Adult Bible uh, Study Guide, the second second quarter of the 2023. It has actually 13 lessons, and the title is the Three Cosmic Messages. I'm going to read the lesson 11, The Seed of God and the Mark of the Beast, Part 1. I'll read for this week's study. Uh, Revelation, I need, today is a rainy day too, and then a little bit cold, so, yeah. Uh, Revelation 14, 12, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, and Matthew 27, 45 through 50, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, Revelation 14, 4, Luke 5, 11, uh, 18 through 26. Uh, memory text comes from Revelation 7, uh, 2 and 3. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, uh, having the seed of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Yeah, so still God, you know, the uh, endure the harm. So do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. <clears throat> because of the servants of God, the earth and the sea and the trees, yeah, still, still, yeah, I'll live for them. Thank you, Lord. As we study end time events in regard to the mark of the peace, the one crucial point that comes through is the difference between how God operates and how the enemy of souls does. As we have been studying the central issues in the great controversy between Christ and Satan, our loyalty, authority, and worship, the prophecies uh, describing the beast power in Revelation 13, the little horn in Daniel 7, and, uh, <clears throat> and the son of God, Perdition in Second Thessalonians 2 or speak of a power that usurps God's authority, commands loyalty, and introduce a counterfeit system of worship. And it does so though the, uh, through, through the use of force, uh, co caution, caution, and uh, at times bribes and rewards or in order to compare worship. In contrast, love is the great motivating force of the kingdom of God rather than worshiping the beast. The God's people find their greatest joy and highest delight in worshiping him. They are committed to him because they know how committed he is to them. There is only one thing that will keep any, any of us from receiving the mark of the beast in the end time, a love for Jesus so deep that nothing can break our hold upon him. In this lesson, we will explore these themes further. Sunday, steadfast endurance, as we have seen in Revelation 14:7. God calls all people to worship the Creator. This is the first angel's message. In Revelation 14a, God warns people about Babylon, a false religious system with the roots back in ancient Babylon. This is the second angel's message. In Revelation 14, 9 and 10, the third angel warns against worshiping the beast. The angel declares in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, 
read Revelation 14, 12, what two characteristics do we, do we discover in this passage about God's last day people? Why are both important? The Greek word for patience is a hum, a hupomen, which is better translated as steadfast endurance. God will have an end, the end time people who are loyal to him in the faith of opposition and the fierce persecution. Through his grace, they stand with a steadfast endurance, living God-centered, grace-filled, obedient lives. Worshiping the Creator, Revelation 14, 7, stands in direct opposition to worshiping the beast, Revelation 14, 9, and finds its expression in a people who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, Revelation 14, 12. This final conflict over, <clears throat> over allegiance to Christ or allegiance to the beast power revives around the worship. And at the heart of this great controversy between good and evil is going to be the Sabbath. Read Romans 8, 1 through 4, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, and Colossians 1, 29. What do these passages teach, teach us about the result of living by, living by faith? Living by faith, we receive His grace and and our lives are changed. The committed followers of the Savior not only will have faith in Jesus, but also will have the faith of Jesus. Jesus' quality of end-time faith will be theirs, and they will remain faithful even unto death as Jesus did. How faithful are you in the little things? What might that tell you about how you will be when the real trial comes. See Luke 16 10. Monday the Cosmic Struggle. Read Matthew 27 uh, 45 through 50. What does this teach us about what Christ experienced on the cross? What did Jesus mean as by asking God why he had forsaken him. And how does this sin help us understand what it means to have the faith of Jesus? Hanging on the, <clears throat> hanging on the, yeah, this also good. See, hanging on the cross uh, and and shrouded in darkness, bearing the guilt, shame, and the condemnation of the sins of the world, and shut off from the sense of his father's love. Jesus depend on the relationship that he had with the father throughout his life, that is through a life of complete dependence upon the father, even in good times. Jesus had been prepared for the worst times, even the cross. The Savior trusted even when all around him, the circumstances cried out for him to doubt. Uh, even when it seemed that God had forsaken him, Jesus didn't give up. Yeah. So beautiful window. I'm going to go window here and there. Amid the upper darkness, uh, apparently forsaken of God, Christ had drained the last dregs in the cup of human woe. In those dreadful hours, he had relied upon the, the evidence of his father's acceptance. We have, we have we are heretofore given him by faith, Christ was a victor. Ellen G. White, Christ triumphant. Uh, page 277. The faith of Jesus is a uh, faith of the faith so deep, so trusting, so committed that all the demons in the cosmos and all the trials on earth cannot shake it. It is a faith that trusts when it cannot see, believers who, when it cannot understand, hangs on when there is little to hang on to. 
This faith of Jesus is itself a gift we receive by faith, and it will carry us through the crisis ahead. It is the faith of Jesus dwelling in our hearts that enables us to worship Christ as supreme and steadfastly endure when revelations mark of the beast is enforced, and yet. It is not something that out of no nowhere suddenly appears. God's people have been learning to live by faith day by day. Now, in good times, in bad times, when God feels close, when God seems far away, it doesn't matter. Matter the just shall live by faith. Galatians three eleven. See also Habakkuk two four. The time for preparation is now. Every tri- trial now, if endured in faith, can bear precious fruit in our lives. Think about the time when life seemed to crumble around you, and all that you had was uh, had was your faith. How did you get by? What lessons did you learn? What did you experience that could help others who might be going through something similar? <clears throat> Tuesday, the ungodly chain. The prophecy regarding the mark of the beast is about religious intolerance, an economic boycott, persecution, and eventually a death decree. Surprisingly, it also is.、Uh, Message of encouragement, even in the worst of times, God will sustain he, His people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation fourteen twelve, and among those commandments, of course, is the fourth, the seventh day, at Sabbath. The mark of the beast prophecy in Revelation thirteen tells us about the worst, the absolute. Fever pitch of Satan's war against God. His first st- strategy in this campaign is deception. Revelation thirteen tells us about the time in the future when the devil will walk through an earthly religious religious political power called the beast and resort to force. Religious persecution, of course, is not new. It has been around ever since Cain killed Abel, Abel for worshiping the way God instructed them to worship. See Genesis four one through eight. Jesus said the persecution would happen even to believers in the first century and down through the the ages. The time is coming. He warned that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. John sixteen two. See also Matthew ten twenty two. First Peter four twelve. The mark of the beast prophecy is about the final link in this ungodly chain. Like the persecutions in the past, it is designed to force everyone to conform to a. Certain set of beliefs and an approved system of worship. Read Revelation thirteen fifteen through seventeen. What will God's end time people face in the final crisis? The prophecy says the persecution will start with economic、uh, sanctions. No one can buy or sell unless they have the mark. When this when this happens, the immense majority will capitula- capitulate. Anyone who refuses will eventually by by placed under a death decree. The devil is preparing profess- professed Christians by com- compromise in their lives to receive the mark of the beast when the final test comes upon us in the future. God's love for each one of us will strengthen us and preserve us during the troubled times ahead. Read Galatians six seven through nine. Though this is not written in the context of last day events, 
Why is the principle here so relevant to issues over the mark of the beast and how we can stand faithful? Yeah, Wednesday, those who follow, follow the Lamb, read Revelation 13, 1 and 2. Where does the beast come from and who gives the beast his authority? The first beast power of Revelation 13 receives his power, seed, and great authority from the dragon. Revelation 12, 9 and uh, Revelation 22 identify the dragon as Satan. Satan is a cunning foe and works through earthly powers. Revelation 12, 3 through 5 says this dragon, the devil, attempted to destroy the male child as soon as he was born. This male child was later caught up to, caught up to God and his throne. This, of course, refers to Christ. Desiring to destroy the Christ child, Satan walked through Herod and Imperial Rome. At the end of Jesus' life, a Roman governor, Pilate, condemned Christ to die. A Roman executioner nailed him to the crucial cross, cruel cross. A Roman soldier pierced him with a spear, and the Roman soldiers guarded his tomb. According to Revelation 13, 2, the dragon Satan walking through pagan Rome would give the seed of his government to this emerging beast power, though pri primarily representing Satan, the dragon in a secondary sense represents the Roman Empire. The power succeeding the Roman Empire, which received from the dragon his power and his seed and great authority, is clearly paper Rome. The SD Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 817. 817. Historian A.C. Flick explains that out of the ruins of political Rome arose the great moral empire in the giant form of the Roman Church. The rise of the medieval church in 1900, page 150, as quoted in the SD Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 817. Read Revelation 13, 3 and Revelation 14, 4. What contrast do you see in these verses? In contrast to all the world who follows the beast, God will have a people who will follow the Lamb instead. As always, it will be one side or the other for Jesus or against Jesus. There will be the there will be then, as now, no middle ground, no neutral position to not firmly commit to Jesus is, consciously or not to commit to the other side, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved, Matthew ten twenty two. How ready are to... Uh, uh, how ready are you to endure to the end? Jesus over only medita mediator to Thursday. Read Re Revelation 13, 4 and 5. What identifying marks of the beast power do, do we discover in these verses? The beast of Revelation is an apostate religious power that rises out of pagan Rome and grows to become a worldwide system of worship. According to Revelation 13, 5, it is a blas uh, blasphemous, blasphemous power in the New Testament. Blasphemy is equated with assuming the privileges and, and uh, prerogatives of God as an equal. Read Luke 5, 18-26 and John 10, 33. What two aspects of blasphemy do these verses identify? Jesus was accused of blasphemy by the leaders. In Jesus' case, the accusations were unjust because he has all the 
powers and the prerogatives of God, including the right to forgive our sins, and that is because Jesus is God, or as he so powerfully expressed it, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? John 14.9 Meanwhile, uh, 1 Timothy 2.5 teaches that there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. In contrast, the Roman Church teaches that the priest is the mediator between God and simple humanity, but because the priest himself is a simple human being, he cannot be our mediator because he also needs a mediator. Blasphemy also is defined as the claim of any human to be God or to stand in the place of God. Uh, here are just two statements from the Roman Church's authoritative sources. The Pavis of so great dignity and so exalted that he is not a mere man. He is as it were God on earth. Lucius, Lucius Paris Papa Articles 2 in his Prompta Bibliotheca 1763 Volume 6 Page 25 through 29. Pope Leo 13 13 boasted, we, the pops, hold on this earth, the place of God Almighty, the great encyclical, encyclical letters of Pope Leo XIII, New York, Ben Gizer, Ben Gizer, 193, page uh, 193. These claims become even more relevant when we understand that the prefix anti as in Antichrist, doesn't always mean against, yeah, against, but also can mean in the place of. Hence, Antichrist also means in place of Christ. Talk about blasphemy. Uh, last Friday, for the thought, from the very beginning of the great controversy in heaven, it has been Satan's purpose to overthrow the law of God. It was to accomplish this that he entered um, upon his rebellion against the Creator, and though he was cast out of heaven, he has continued the same warfare upon the earth to deceive men and thus lead them to transgress God's law is the object which he has steadfastly pursued. Whether this be accomplished by casting aside the law altogether or by rejecting one of his precepts, the result will be ultimately the same in seeking to cast a contempt upon the divine statues. Satan has perverted the the doctrines of the Bible and errors have thus become incorporated into the faith of thousands who profess to believe the scriptures. The last great conflict, conflict between truth and error is but the final struggle of the long-standing controversy concerning the law of God. Upon this battle, we are now entering a battle between the laws of man and the precepts of Jehovah, between the religion of the Bible and the religion of favor and tradition. Ellen G. White, The Great Controversy, page 582, throughout Revelation, worship and creation are in this solubly, in this solubly linked. The essence of the controversy between good and evil and the issues surrounding the mark of the beast revolve around whether God is worthy to be worshipped. As we have seen the concept of Christ as creator is at the very heart of Sabbath worship 
Jesus constantly underlines the significance of the day of which he calls himself the Lord. Matthew 12, 8, Mark 2, 28, Luke 6, 5, the Sabbath is an eternal reminder of our identity. It reminds us of who we are as human beings. It plays worth on every human being. It constantly re reinforces the idea that we are created beings and that our Creator is worthy of of our allegiance and the worship. Wow. Yeah, right. Right, right. And it is the golden inker. Now, this is the uh, reason why the devil hates the Sabbath so much. It is the golden link the, that unites us with our Creator, and this is why it will play such a crucial role in the final crisis at the end. Yeah, right over here, constant reinforce. Yes. And the last discussion questions two. One, what are the basic principles behind the CB's claim to authority? In what ways can those same attitudes be lodged in our hearts without or knowledge? Two, how do you respond to those who argue that the idea of a leader Satan is a primitive super, superstition that educated or at least at least intelligent people cannot take people can't take seriously what arguments could you use in response yeah last year in inside the story only 26 minutes it takes so thank you uh, inside the story I can't do this by Andrew McChenney the party sounded perfect. A table was booked at a club in Harare, Har Zimbabwe. Har Har Zimbabwe. Alcohol was purchased and the people were invited, but Elder didn't come. What happened? Herbert asked when he later saw his friend. I can't do this. Elder replied, I'm an elder. Herbert had heard the explanation before. He and the elder had become friends while teaching at the high school in Harare. 19-year-old Herbert was taking off a year to teach before entering the university. Elder was 25 and an elder at the Seventh-day Adventist church. Herbert parted. Uh, but elder, elder would not participate. He always explained, I cannot do this. I am an elder. Herbert had never met an, met an Adventist before, and he thought, this guy is true to, this, to his church. But he declined the elder's invitations to go to church. The next year, Herbert enrolled at Midland, Midlands State University in Guo. He kept remembering Elder and he visited an Adventist church for the first time. The people were warm and friendly and the sermon touched his heart. During the semester break, he went to another Adventist church while visiting an aunt. He, it, got, it got to the point that every time he saw a church, he wanted to go inside. He felt like something was missing from his spiritual life. For his second year of studies, Herbert received a scholarship to study in Russia. He, he, he wondered whether he would find an Adventist church there. One Saturday, he was drunk, and Mildred, Mildred arrived at the birthday party of a mutual friend at 8 p.m. in Moscow. Why did you come too late? He asked. I was at, at church, Mildred, Mildred said. But it's Saturday, Herbert said. The church is on Saturday. Herbert couldn't believe his ears. Mildred saw his interest and invited him to go to church the next Sabbath. She even waited for him in the metro station on Sabbath morning, but Herbert was embarrassed. 
that she had seen him drunk and she did not show up. When she called to see where he was, he found himself saying, I'm sorry, um, I will come next Sabbath. Mildred called him throughout the week to remind him of his promise. He accompanied her to the Moscow International Seventh-day Adventist Church on Sabbath. A year later, Herbert gave his heart to Jesus in baptism. Church on Sabbath baptism, he contacted the elder and thanked him for being faithful. Elder was enjoyed. Yeah. So today, Herbert Nabah Nebadaja is an active church member. I'm thankful to God that he led me to the Seventh day Adventist. He said this mission story illustrated the spiritual growth of object. Spiritual growth objective number five of the Seventh day Adventist churches. I will go strategic plan to disciple individuals and families into spiritual. Spirit filled lives for more information, visit I will go 2020.org. And it is provided by the uh, General Conference Office of Adventist Mission, which uses Sabbath, Sabbath school mission offerings to spread the gospel worldwide. Read the news stories daily at AdventistMission.org. Yeah. So thank you. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer and go to Lesson 12 with the Part 2. Yeah. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And ever. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much. And may God bless all of you. And uh, I will meet uh, soon the lesson 12. And the last one is lesson 13. Lesson 13, the title is the A Blaze with God's Glory. Yeah. This one is the ne next, uh, the lesson also, part two, the seed of God and the mark of the beast. Yeah. See you. Just 32 minutes, I'm so happy to uh, read more. <laughs> okay, bye. See, may God bless all of you.